Here we go. Good morning and welcome to the free Decision Point Trading Room. Today is August 26th and we have quite a bit to cover. It's certainly going to be an interesting week. We have um, some questions about gold and gold miners that we're going to be talking about. Uh, lots to cover. Uh, I will be going over the major earnings that are going to be announced on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, quite a few coming out. Of course, NVIDIA is on Wednesday, so we'll have to talk about NVIDIA. And all of this, um, that's pretty much going to cover most of what we're going to do today. Q&A box is where you're going to put your symbol requests and questions. Please only do one symbol request per person. That way we can make sure everybody gets their symbol request looked at at the end of the program. Chat room is for you. And there are people in there. Actually, my moderator is in there already to welcome you. Just be sure that when you're in the chat room that you use the drop down menu to send your um, comment to everyone. Otherwise, uh, only Carl and I get it and we don't follow the chat room. So, all right, Dad, let's go ahead and get it started. Okay. <clears throat> let's start with the uh, signal tables. Um, we've got everything on a buy except intermediate term energy and intermediate term semiconductors. The buy, the, the uh, timing model is basically a crossover of moving average uh, intermediate term when the tw 20 crosses up through the 50 that would be a buy signal. And in the long term is when the 50 crosses up through the um, uh, 200 EMA. So um, just two neutrals right now. They're both configured at this point in time to switch probably this week. Energy have, has having a nice boost today. We'll get around to that uh, when we get to oil. Okay, here's our bias assessment. We have a silver cross index, which consists of the percentage of stocks within a given index that are that have a 20 EMA above the 50. That's the one that would be considered. I'm sorry, that and the percentage of those we track uh, uh, with a 10 day moving average. So if the if the uh, in Silver Cross Index crosses up through its 10-day moving average, that's a bullish bias. When it crosses down through, um, down through the 50, it's a bearish bias. Uh, Golden Cross, same situation, only with the uh, 50 and 200-day moving average, uh, and the Golden Cross Index is the percentage of stocks with the Golden Cross within a certain within a specified index. So we still have quite a few bears uh, in the, but more bulls than bears. And uh, intermediate term is uh, good, looking pretty good. Let's go to my next. Okay. That is not this chart that I want to start with. I've got this I'm starting to use a new browser and it stacks the uh, tabs on differently than the one I've been using for 20 years. <laughs> okay. Um, here we have uh, SP 500 ETF spy. It's uh, we had a, a um, rising wedge formation also which is expected to break down, which it didn't. It broke out of that, and it's right now trying to break through to all-time highs. We don't know if that's going to be the, uh, it's going to be able to do that or not. But uh, right now, it's kind of rolling over. We've got a few, quite a few charts that have this hesitation and stalling right now. Okay, here I go. 
Okay, the uh, dollar index had a really bad week uh, last week, and uh, right now it's it's uh, uh, hanging out at the bottom of this uh, candle right here. So uh, I'm not sure what the the story is behind this, but uh, that's going to be good for gold. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Gold is uh, trying to establish new new all time highs. It did last week new all time highs, and uh, uh, today it's it's struggling with that. Gold miners again a rising trend. Uh, we'll have more to say about this in, uh, later in my presentation here, but right now it's. Uh, it uh, looks like a flag formation, which is a bullish. Here's a big story. Is uh, crude is up, okay, 3% this morning. It was up 35 earlier. And the story behind that is Libya's eastern government halts all production. Okay, that's the headline. And you, you should look that up if you're interested on the internet. Uh, but we've got a double bottom, uh, which is a perfect setup for what has been going on. Uh, obviously, the, this uh, production halt was probably being talked about uh, last week. So right now, it's follow through on that. Here is the con confirmation line. Got the double bottom, and the, it's got to go up through this middle of the W to confirm it. Treasuries um, in a rising trend right now is trying to get above this uh, high right here. Uh, I think the story is better told by looking at the weekly chart. And here we've got a reverse head and shoulders. Here's a kind of steep neckline, and it's broken above that. So... Uh, we would expect to see treasuries going higher for a while. Ten-year treasury yield, uh, basically a triangle formation here, but it's been trending down since this uh, high over here in April, and probably actually from this high in uh, October. But uh, um, let's look at the yield of rate chart. If, if you look at that, this, we see we've got a very um, condensed, a dense uh, area here that should provide support before it gets below there. So that's, that's what I'm looking for. Of course, what happens in September with the Fed will have uh, some will have an impact on this. Right now, people are looking for a quarter point in uh, September, a rate cut that it would be. Bitcoin um, in a below it a falling trend line here. Let me look at the this is a much better picture long term and we've got uh, parabolic advance here and now we're forming a flag off of that that flagpole there so looking at that we would expect a breakout and for bitcoin to go higher let's get to the magnificent seven okay this is the kind of thing I was talking about. We're seeing a number of charts with this uh, rolling over top look here. No guarantees, but you know that hints to me that we're going to see prices go lower on that chart. The weekly chart of Apple 
it's a, a, a rising wedge, which we expect to break down, but it broke up. So <clears throat> that's the bullish configuration there. Amazon, <clears throat> in that kind of area, is kind of rolling over here. <clears throat> and uh, breaking out above this line, and it's there's another line coming down here, which it hasn't managed to overcome yet. The weekly chart, Amazon made <clears throat> all-time highs uh, earlier this year. Uh, it got above this resistance, but now it's broken down again. And uh, it's staying above this rising trend line, but it's going to have to fight with that resistance line again. <clears throat> Alphabet, better known as Google, uh, it's broken above this declining top line here. Positive, we've got a, a PMO crossover. And uh, so it, that is looking uh, bullish at this point. But we've, uh, we've got this uh, down trend here, which it broke through. So yeah, looking bullish at this point. Let's see. The weekly, yes, above the rising trend line, um, the weekly PMO has uh, crossed down through a signal line, but it's still above, well above zero. So we'd have to look for maybe to, to find support right in here. Here's Meta. Uh, basically in a, um, a, a sideways trend here, uh, trying to make all-time highs. It, it actually did last week, and now it's falling off of that. But this is a, the sideways trend is, uh, you know, we would assume it would continue for, for now. Notice that the PMO has topped. So that's that's a negative. So we should see it decline for a while. And the weekly chart, uh, long-term double top, that's a problem, but it's still above the rising trend line. So um, you can't say it's bearish at this point. Microsoft broke above this declining tops line and it's... Um, um, Pulling back, and again, it's a lot of the stocks are, are uh, seem to be topping out. So, look again. I think what this Wednesday when uh, when Nvidia has their earnings drop, Aaron. Yep, Wednesday. Okay, so probably a lot of uh, suspense there. Let's see the weekly chart of uh, Microsoft. Not so good. Rising wedge, and it broke down from that. It's it, uh, had a reaction rally back up to that line and it's pulling back. So this is uh, definitely looking uh, bearish. Here's NVIDIA. Um, it's toying with basically resistance in here. I would say the horizontal res resistance is uh, the primary issue. Well, we do have a, it's fighting this declining top line as well. Um, let's see. Okay, we have, here's the problem for NVIDIA. It's got this uh, parabolic advance and parabolic demand uh, correction. And it has corrected, but we can't say that it's done yet because we could uh, could go further down or we could see it consolidate in a major trading range uh, at this high level, which would, that would be positive for the stock, but it'll be uh, wicked to deal with if you, if you own it. That's why um, broken above the declining tops line. Uh, actually right now, the, the PMO has topped again, second time below the, signal line so um it's uh looking a little shaky on the weekly chart 
broken above this declining tops line, but then fell back below it, snapped back up, and it's retreating from that line now. So uh, Tesla is not looking so fantastic at this point. Uh, and let's see. Right. Um, we had a question uh, from last week. I saved the questions that we didn't get to. Uh, is IBM, should IBM be compared to QQQ versus SPY? Uh, I, I don't think there's a should, uh, except if how you're defining what, what are you trying to figure out. If I want to know how IBM is doing against the broad market, then I pick SPY. Uh, if I want to know how it's doing about it uh, within its, uh, its, uh, industry group or sector i would pick i would pick the uh technology sector uh etf which is xlk so uh i would i wouldn't uh, uh pick one over the other you know decide what it is you're trying to find out and uh, pick the index to, to follow there okay the Um, let me take one other one. Okay, is I wrote an article last week. Uh, I, I, one of the guests on uh, Fox Business said he thought you should sell gold because gold, uh, the gold miners index, had not recovered to its all time highs. Uh, let me. That's that's sorry, I paid the wrong one. Sorry, there we go. Okay, here here is the all time highs for gold and and uh, the gold miners index over here in two thousand eleven, and you can see the gold miners index will be more accelerated in 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 this direction than gold. It's just the way it works out, and it's always that way. Uh, theoretically, it should have bounced back and, and caught up with gold on this uh, performance chart. But really, we're dealing with a major decline. And then we have an, an advance here. That's, that's So there's three different things. Right now, we're looking at the big picture. Uh, I should mention that one of the problems of it not catching up is right here, we had uh, market correcting, but gold rallied for a little bit and of course miners rallied along with it a lot and then they 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 both had a decline 18 percent for gold and 45 percent for the miners index so that that really took a lot off the impetus there but it's still it's still struggling to get back up along this uh to this area of resistance now i I will just comment. I think the problem is that gold has been so tedious along here for like 20, it's like three years almost that, that it's been in this trading range, uh, really breaking down here and giving uh, us a scare. Uh, now it's beginning to rally again and gold miners are getting beginning to check, uh, catch up. But let's take a look at the, here's, the performance on the decline from the all-time highs. So you can see, let's see, let's, I should have marked that out, but I didn't. So gold itself declined by 40, 45%. Um, and gold miners declined by 79, 80%, we'll say. So that's a bunch. And again, it's you're trying to, uh, in a in a panic, sell off. Uh, you would expect a, a lot more panic in the in the miners. Okay, now let's go to the. Um, let's go to 2016. That's at the low. They had, now you notice that uh, miners have outperformed. Uh, gold in that 
uh, from in this period here. Uh, it's still not made all-time highs, or it's not returned to its all-time highs, and it hasn't even uh, overcome this these tops here. It's getting there. Uh, the point being, it's uh, so it, on the upside again. It's not performing gold, so um, I would not say that gold miners' performance is a good reason to sell gold. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, someone had a question, is uh, RSP, which is the equal weight uh, S&P 500, uh, is that uh, better than SPY? Um, a, a few years ago, I would say uh, RSP can be better than SPY uh, by a lot. Uh, so you have to be... Uh, you have to follow the relative strength of each one, each one and see right now that I keep this uh, right, uh, relative strength line here on uh, SPY versus RSP. And you can see SPYs is just outperforming all along, except right here, it's uh, SPY has picked up, but uh, I can't see you jumping back and forth uh, at this point, uh, the thing that screwed it up is the uh, the uh, magnificent seven type stocks uh, are just you know so heavily weighted in in the spy that it's it's hard for RSP to do anything, and because uh, they they uh, just aren't benefiting from the uh, from the uh, uh, magnificent seven stocks, so. No, it's not better, but uh, it could be. But let's wait till it. You'd have to step aside for a while and wait till the uh, the uh, large cap stocks have received some comeuppance. Okay, now I guess we ought to take a look at the Q and A. Yes. See if we got any. Yeah, one of them is, is September typically a weak period for the stocks? Okay. I'll tell you, why don't you pick that one uh, with the relative strength, I, uh, not with you know, the uh, seasonality. Oh, okay. Here, sure, no problem. Yeah, whenever you pick, let me let's skip that for now. Yeah, I'll get that ready. Also, with interest rate cuts coming, what will that do to bonds? Well, bonds... Will if rates if rates go down, bonds will rally. That's just the way they rates and bonds are, you know, move opposite of one another. Okay, I I think that we don't have any other questions. So all I right, I'll let you let's, take it. Okay, so let's go to that question about seasonality. And that's this chart I want. All right, there we go. Okay, so this is a seasonality chart that looks at the SPY from 2005 to 2024. And it gives you an idea of the percentage of time um, the market is up versus down. And as you can see, every month, the market is usually a little bit higher, except whoop, September. September is the only month where it does say that it's down about 58% of the time. It's down 0.7%. Um, so September, based on this seasonality chart, is typically one of the worst months for the market. So that's something we can keep in mind, Mike. Yeah, we think of October as the big month and we got that in 87 but um september is also a really bad month mm -hmm. okay that looks like it for the questions i noticed somebody raised their hand be sure and put your question in the q a box as well as your symbol request looks like we don't have too many symbol requests so if you want to um, put in a few more um that's fine. 
Okay, so let's get back to right now. What I want to talk about is earnings. Everything can see, you can see my chart, right? Um, so Wednesday, we have quite a few reporting. Of course, the big one is NVIDIA. So we have to look at the NVIDIA chart. Uh, Carl looked at it earlier, but I want to look at it with a different eye. We do have a flag formation, which is bullish, but the flag is moving sideways. Those kind of flags don't always work out the way you expect them to work out. Right now, technically, you know, NVIDIA looks okay. We've got the PMO on the rise. We have the OBV with rising bottoms that go with rising bottoms in price. But the one problem I'm noticing is the group is starting to underperform and NVIDIA is only performing in line with the market, which isn't surprising because it almost is the market at this point. Um, but it is outperforming its group. The big problem I have with the NVIDIA chart right now are stochastics. And stochastics are kind of telling me, um, I do full disclosure, own NVIDIA. The stochastics tipping downward going into earnings is a problem for me. Um, stochastics are usually really early in their detection of problems. Now, granted, they are above 80, so that, that means there is still internal strength here. But the fact that they're turning over like this tells me that maybe I don't want to be holding NVIDIA through earnings at this point. Now, I mean, I know, you know, winners that keep on winning and, and all of those sorts of uh, ideas out there could certainly do what you wish. Personally, I'm looking at the NVIDIA chart going into earnings, and I'm kind of nervous about what I'm seeing. If we look at the weekly chart, well, we looked at that earlier. We're going to pass on that. All right, so who else is reporting? Salesforce is reporting on Wednesday as well. Salesforce chart doesn't look that great. Um, we have flat tops here, and it does look like it's trying to break out a little bit. Um, it looks better than the NVIDIA chart. The only issue is it's going to struggle with this overhead resistance area going into earnings. Um, but we still have a PMO that's on the rise. We have stochastics holding above 80. We have relative strength against the group rising. So Salesforce actually looks pretty good going into earnings. The one thing it has going against it is that the software group itself has started to underperform the market. And so even if we get a rise, it may not be um, all that exciting. If we look at a weekly chart on CRM, we can see that we are in a nice rising trend here. PMO, weekly PMO is turning up, um, does have some serious overhead resistance to deal with over here. But with this rising trend, it does look like we're gonna get a test back up here of these tops. So I think Salesforce looks pretty good going into earnings. CrowdStrike, I have to say, I wouldn't touch CrowdStrike with a 10 foot pole. Given their problems that they had earlier, talk of legal issues involved with that. Um, Salesforce, or I mean, uh, CrowdStrike is gonna be under a lot of pressure. And like NVIDIA, you can see stochastics are topping. Price looks like it's kind of pausing and turning over. Um, I would be very careful with CrowdStrike right now, going into earnings. And a weekly chart on CrowdStrike looks um, not the greatest to me. We've got this area of overhead resistance, a zone, if you will, right here at the this um, low and then at this top back up here, which sets up a pretty strong resistance zone that it's going to have to deal with. Um, so I'd beware of CrowdStrike right now. And HP would be another. HP is, let's see, we've got a, what looks kind of like, well, no, not really a reverse head and shoulders. PMO is on the rise. RSI is pretty much even. Stochastics are on the rise and just moved above 80. This looks good, except that we haven't gotten above this area of overhead resistance. 
And that makes me a little nervous going into earnings for HP. And the weekly chart for HP, we can see that the weekly PMO is starting to turn over. And again, overhead resistance does look like it's going to be a problem for HP moving forward. So we want to keep um, be careful with that one as well. All right, so that covers kind of the major earnings that are coming out on Wednesday, um, in particular NVIDIA, and what we're looking at as far as going into earnings for NVIDIA. Um, like I said, I personally am likely to sell my position before earnings. I don't like to hold through earnings in general, so keep that in mind. I just don't like to do it anyway. Um, but I, I don't like what I'm seeing on the chart either. So don't be mad, though, if you sell it and then it goes up 20% on earnings. <laughs> I'll be sad, too. Uh, OK, let's go ahead and move into um, sector rotation right now and see what's going on with the sectors. I had that up, but now I don't. Let's view them all in a candle glance. And this will give us just a sense of the trends and what the PMO is up to. So as you can see, most of these sectors are all on the rise. Energy was a little bit depressed out there, but it's starting to re, um, reignite with the crude oil prices rising. And it could see some follow through if crude oil is going to continue higher, as the technicals suggest it will with that double bottom. So I like what I'm seeing in energy moving forward here. We've got a new PMO buy signal coming in. Looks pretty good for energy moving forward. Financials still look very strong. You can see that we have um, this area of overhead resistance was broken and we're getting a move to the upside as well. The one that I am looking at that worries me a bit is technology. And this one should tell us to be a little bit nervous about what's going to happen in the market moving forward, because technology is a real driver of what's going to happen. And right now, technology is topping out. Um, we do have that silver cross buy signal you can see of the 20 and 50 there. But if price gets below those, that buy signal could end up being erased. The PMO is still rising and it did get into positive territory. So all is not lost here for technology, but certainly of all of these sectors, technology does look the weakest. So, you know, we're seeing in comm services, the other growth area, a little bit of pause going on here, a little bit of digestion going on for consumer discretionary. These are the three very um, high growth areas. Um, we want them to be doing well because that means the market's usually going to do well. They're starting to look a little weak, which means the market could be in for some more turbulence moving forward. All right, so that covers sector rotation at this point. Um, I do see that materials have broken out. I meant to mention that with industrials, both have broken out. Okay, so with that, I think it's time to go ahead and just move on to our symbol requests. So let's get to it. Volunteer. All right. Did we get any other questions? Um, no. Okay. All right, let's get to it. Palantir. <clears throat> All right, so Palantir is a software company. Uh, I just told you software is starting to show problems. Um, you know, 50% of your stock's move is usually attributed to what's happening in the industry group and what is happening in the sector itself. So you really want to make sure your industry group is outperforming, and it's not. So that puts a little bit of a damper on things just to start out. You can also see relative strength is starting to fail against the SPY and against the industry group. PMO has topped. Price is topping right now. This doesn't look very good for, to me moving forward. I would be looking for more downside coming up. The weekly chart is, I mean, the weekly chart looks fine. 
We've got this area of overhead resistance that was broken. It's in a rising trend. So maybe in the longer term, it's looking a bit better, but you can see prices starting to turn down. It could be wanting to go down and test this rising trend once again. So it may stay in that rising trend in the intermediate term, but it doesn't mean that you're not gonna see some decline to get it back down to test that rising trend. So be careful there. O-L-L-I. Ollie. All right, here's a broadline retailer for you. Um, bearish engulfing candlestick going on right now. Um, <laughs> does look like it's trying to be a little toppy here, but you know, it's still managing to hold its rising trend. Uh, PMO on the buy signal stochastics above 80. Uh, relative strength is rising a bit for the group of the broadline retailers. Um, I mean, I like the chart. It's okay. Um, you've got everything on the chart telling me that we probably are going to see higher prices. Stochastics did top though, so it might be a little bit of a up, down, you know, start and stop kind of a rally like we're seeing already. So, um, you know, I don't know that I'd want to be involved in that sort of a situation. Um, also, earnings are going to be reported on uh, the 29th. So, they are going to report this week, so I think I would be staying away from it. And like I said, I don't like to hold through earnings. Um, looks pretty good on the weekly. It is in a rising trend. It kind of steepened that rising trend. Um, but again, you've got the rising trend, but price is turning down and it might want to test that rising trend line, which means short term it looks bad. Um, Midterm, it doesn't look that bad. Um, PMO, though, does look like it wants to top here. And the scooter is losing value here. So mm, I'm, I think that this is sort of a mediocre kind of a pick. Home Depot. All right. HD. Um. Well, we've got a rising trend. Um, it is breaking out right now, but it's forming a filled black candlestick. Those are bearish formations and typically will come at a top. Didn't happen last time over here, but because it's just now breaking out over overhead resistance, I'd want to see that filled black candlestick go away today if possible. Um, RSI is okay. PMO rising, stochastics above 80. Relative strength looks pretty good right now. Um, I could see follow through coming in here. The only issue, like I said, is that filled black candle. And that's something we're talking about in the very, very short term. Um, but it looks like you're going to get the breakout. The one problem is overhead resistance is coming up pretty quickly here. If we look at a weekly chart, same sort of situation, nice rising trend, but overhead resistance is getting ready to be met. And it is about 5% away. So it's going to be starting to test, I'm guessing, all-time highs. Let's just double check. Yeah, it'll be testing all-time highs in another 5% plus move. So that could pose a problem for it. It does look lined up okay to break out with this PMO on the crossover buy signal um, that occurred above the zero line. So that does look pretty good intermediate term. So at this point, we should look for the breakout, but it could stumble when it gets there. Okay, Mike says UNG looks tempting with winter season coming up. Uh, that was my thought last year. <laughs> it didn't work <laughs> out so well. Uh, uh, what the problem with UNG is, I believe, is when, when the Biden administration stopped the export of uh, liquid national LNG. And uh, so that's really put a damper on uh, UNG prices. And so I think uh, if if uh, the administration changes to Trump, well, I would expect 
exports will pick up and I, as well as the price of UNG. Yeah, technically it doesn't look so good. We're on the decline. I mean, if you wanted to hop in and give it a chance um, at these lows, you certainly could um, consider doing that. But I think if I look at a weekly, well, it is looks like it is at um, kind of all time lows right now. So if you wanted to hop in and give it a shot, um, you certainly could just based on the fact that it's near new lows. But we keep thinking that when we get to the this level, we thought that that was as low as it could go. When it got to this level, we thought it was as low as it could go, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, it it is at lows, but we know that it could certainly break down below those. And the weekly PMO does not look very healthy on UNG. So I could see getting involved just because it's near new lows, um, but... I mean, that would be the only reason. I don't see anything technically on the chart to tell me it's going to make a nice move upward. Okay, here's a question. What will happen to the value of floating rate ETFs when interest rates uh, are uh, cut? If you, why don't you let me take that back because I've got it. Yes, that would be great. All right, there's a, there it is. I talked about these maybe a month ago. Um, what will happen to these uh, floating rate? And here's the, that's not what I'm looking for the list. Okay, here's a list of them. And uh, they, they have a floating interest rate. They're going to pay whatever the interest rate is from day to day. Um, uh, when you get into these, you got to be in at the beginning of the month in order to get any return at all. Uh, but obviously they can't pay more than what the T-bills the are paying, you know, the different durations. This is for the three-month uh uh, T bills and uh, the you see this this is because of um, this is not really representative of hmm. what's happening. I think you have to put let's see see it's paying out this this shows it uh, without without the adjustment for uh, uh, dividends so. It goes up and it distributes, and it goes up and it distributes. This is just the accumulation of, of the uh, int of the interest before it pays out. So, uh, yeah, they're gonna. You, you don't lock in an interest rate. If you want to lock it in, you're gonna have to buy the actual T bills, and that'll lock it in for whatever the duration is. Okay, you may take it back. All right. Okay, here we go. All right, so what's uh, our next one? AMD. AMD. All right. Um, cup with handle. Um, semiconductors starting to fail a little bit in their performance against the S&P. And as you can see, AMD is also starting to underperform the S&P a little bit here. This looks like a flag. Um, and the flag is actually downward, um, moving, trending downward. So that's actually a pretty good setup um, for a breakout. Uh, PMO is below the zero line, though, so we have to temper our expectations. Maybe we'll get a breakout, but maybe not to the degree that this flag suggests we would get to. Um, but just going off of that um, flag formation, I think we're going to see a breakout come, come up here. But the overall market, the stochastics are moving down. That's going to put a damper on things. And so I wouldn't say that this flag couldn't move even further out here. So it is a flag, but the flag could continue to build. 
which means getting involved now, you're probably going to see lower prices as the flag matures a little bit more before you'll get the breakout. So I like what's going on on the chart as far as that um, pattern goes, but you know, the indicators are kind of soft here with stochastics and uh, the RSI. So I'd be careful here. I think that flag could end up getting a little bit uh, more lengthy. And we're in a big declining trend here for AMD, um, which isn't a good sign. We don't have a breakout yet. The weekly PMO is in decline. So AMD is working against, um, you know, not more of a bearish bias set up here on the weekly chart. So it could end up being a falling wedge, though. I guess I should check that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is a falling wedge, but... Mm -hmm. So, Definitely. so the expectation is a breakout there, but you know, that weekly PMO is headed lower. So keep an eye on that. Next. IBM. All right. We talked a little bit about IBM and comparing it to the SPY or to its industry group or to the sector. Um, down here, we're comparing it to um, the S&P, and then we're comparing it to the industry group itself of computer services. And, you know, as far as what it's doing relatively, everything is moving in line with the SPY, which at this point isn't a problem. Um, it has broken out above this level of overhead resistance and is making its way slowly higher. It is on the overbought side getting there anyway. And stochastics have topped. All of these charts, a lot of them really look like they're due for some digestion or they're in the middle of digestion. And I think there's gonna be more digestion to be occurring here, more consolidation or chop and churn. Um, so, while some of these are set up to continue a breakout like this one, I think is, um, there's still some problems under the surface here with the stochastics. Although I just noticed the PMO has surged above its signal line. So that does imply we're gonna see some upside follow through here. And it is making new all time highs at this point. Mm -hmm. So P weekly PMO on the buy signal so ultimately, IBM does have a, a bullish look to it. Okay, Chipotle. All righty. Okay. Um, well, I guess it's definitely a bottoming formation. Um, you could make a case for kind of a diamond shape. Here, those um, diamond shapes are reversal patterns. You don't see them that often, but that's kind of what I would look at this as being. So that's a reversal pattern that it's setting up. Um, RSI is now positive. I like what's happening with the PMO and stochastics. Chipotle looks pretty good here. It just has to deal with some overhead resistance, not only at this level here, which is about two and a half percent away, but it also has to deal with the 50-day uh, moving average. Um, I, it looks like it's set up to continue higher, but that area of overhead resistance with a market that's looking shaky, I think that Chipotle might um, have some more to work out before it gets past that level. Um, maybe some more consolidation beneath the 50-day EMA. But if you get that breakout above the 50-day EMA, I would be looking for much higher prices. But right now with the market in flux um, and it being below that 50-day EMA makes me a little nervous. Um, it does not look good on the weekly chart. It's in a big declining trend. The weekly PMO is in de decline. Um, so short term, like I said, I think the chart looks okay. 
But longer term, I'm not liking what I'm seeing here, at least until we get a breakout, because this is a pretty steep declining trend that it is in. All right, um, MU. All right, another semiconductor. You can see all these semiconductors are really, they got the big push and now they're all starting to fail. Um, another reason why I don't think I'd wanna hold NVIDIA into earnings. Um, PMO wants to top well below the zero line here. Stochastics are falling. Relative strength is not what you wanna see. I can see that why you'd want to be involved is because you know you're finally getting a pullback on a semiconductor that you know has performed fairly well. You can see against the spy, it, it has been a really good performer. Um, but right now it's not. I see more downside ahead. Um, I think you're going to see a test of this level down here. So I'm not um, on board for a buy with Micron right now. And looking at the weekly chart, we are still in a very steep declining trend with the weekly PMO headed lower. Um, we have a longer term rising trend, but like I said, you could hold that rising trend and still end up with a big decline here. So I don't like the way Micron is set up right now. Uh, silver. Use our silver chart. Uh, well, it's at overhead resistance right now, but it, it's in a rising trend. Gold is looking pretty good. The dollar is on its way down. Um, PMO just went above the zero line. I have to say that I like the look here. And then I also am noticing discounts on CEF. Um, what is that? The Canadian... Uh, I can't think of what it is. Something it's, fun. It's a sprout. Uh, it's a sprout fund. It's a sprout fund. Okay. It used to be Central Fund of Canada. That's what I was thinking. Okay. So anyway, I noticed that we measure sentiment by the discounts on the closed end fund. Um, and right now, those discounts have been moving lower, which means that we're seeing more bullishness. Um, from investors, the sentiment is getting a little more bullish. So I think silver does have a pretty good chance here for a breakout to go retest highs that we saw back up here. It's interesting. Uh, first of all, the the there's gold and silver about equal uh, amounts in that fund, and uh, but it's interesting that with gold making uh, all time highs, it still have a a discount this is the uh the, the fund is uh selling at a discount which is you know people are still are not ex very excited about gold because it's been such a tedious uh yeah. commodity to watch over the years yes that's a good uh adjective tedious okay uh you gonna do a weekly or yeah let's look at the weekly why not Well, the PMO wants to turn back up. Um, it is in a declining trend here and certainly is vulnerable to holding on to that declining trend. Um, I don't know, do you see anything of interest here? Okay, AVAV. -A -V. Okay. Another, uh, this isn't a semiconductor, but boy, it sure looked like a semiconductor, didn't it? With its rise and then its fall. Um, mm -hmm. Price is now below both the 20 and 50 day moving averages. The PMO is topped. Stochastics are in positive territory, but they are on it the way down. So I would not be a buyer here. Um, I think that it's at a sell point. Um, certainly a lot of, a lot of things going wrong on this chart. And the weekly. Um, declining trend. Overall, it's been in a rising trend right now. It's a pretty nice little rising trend. But again, the market looks like it. Hmm? You've got a, a parabolic there at the end, you see. 
and it broke down from that parabolic. Ah, yes. So, so here you go. Here's the parabolic formation coming up. And then bang, we got the breakdown. It hit that 43-week EMA and did manage to bounce there. But it looks like it still has some more to work out here, especially with that PMO topping beneath its signal line. So um, probably a little bit more to work out of this um, parabolic decline. RDFN. Redfin. All right, nice looking chart, just really overbought right now, um, which would prevent me from being a buyer. This is a filled black candlestick. Again, those are bearish formations. If we keep that into the close, it tells us to expect a decline tomorrow. The chart looks very strong. If I did own this, I'd probably have a trailing stop set on it just because this rally is almost straight up. And I want to... In I want to stay invested and enjoy more vertical rally, but we know vertical rallies generally end terribly and very quickly. So that's why you want to probably have a trailing stop on one of these parabolic uh, formations. Um, it just looks like it's time for a pause here, but ultimately it's still a very strong looking stock, um, just really overbought. And weekly chart, it does look like it's on overhead resistance right now, which might explain why it's struggling a little bit here, not struggling, but could struggle here. Um, might be an area of digestion. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I think you could see another move up to the next level of overhead resistance. That's a 50 something percent move if we can get it back up there. But right now it's at the top of its trading zone. Typically over the last two years, that means it's gonna head back down to test the bottom of that zone. So you're taking a chance, but if you get the break out there, I think this could be really, really interesting. Are you in? Sunrun. All right. Renewable energy, I'd kind of be careful with this area anyway. It's sort of speculative. Um, well, we've got the group is doing okay. It's performing in line with the S&P. And Sunrun itself is outperforming. Um, getting a little parabolic here, I have to say. Um, but we did get the breakout, and now it's kind of giving its little mechanical pullback here. Um, it looks like a pretty good breakout here. The PMO is surged above the signal line and is flat above the signal line. So that implies we'll, we'll see a little bit more upside. Another one here that's at the top of a trading range. But let's see, where is this? This looks like the strongest area right here of what was resistance. And so it has gotten above that. Um, the next level of resistance could be at this top back here and this top, which is about 13% away. So you have some upside potential here, but this does look like an area where it might struggle and turn back down. You know, uh, this, uh, you, that huge mountain there, and uh, it, you know, this is, shows all the enthusiasm and it finally crashed. It's a typical of renewable energy uh, business. It's a scam. You know, there's it's heavily, uh, you know, government uh, money going into them, and it's just, they're just not producing. I, you could... You know, I would expect it to continue uh, moving to the right in that narrow trading range down at the bottom. Uh, maybe yeah. never will go back to the the highs of saw in twenty yeah. in twenty twenty one. For sure, okay. not a good look. We've got thirty seconds. Oh, okay. And I did not go to our website, so let me get over there real quick. We have 
three subscriptions available. We have introduced our new scan alert system where we will give you at the end of the market day, I will send you all of the symbols from the exclusive Decision Point Diamond scans. So you can go through all those symbols, have a nice starting point for the next day as to what symbols you might wanna look at. The Decision Point Alert is our cornerstone report. This is what you absolutely must have as far as we're concerned. This gives you a summary of what's happening in the market. We also cover dollar, gold, Bitcoin, yields, bonds, tons of other information in there, gold miners. But every day you're going to get a sense of what's happening in all of these areas so that you will be ready for the next day and understand what the trend and condition of the market is. Uh, that pretty much covers it. Decision Point Diamonds. This is where I'm going to give you 10 stock picks per week. So you don't have to go through um, the symbols here. I actually do it for you over there. All right, that covers it. Let's finish up and wish everybody a good trading week. It'll be interesting to see what happens with all these earnings on Wednesday. But I have to say, I'm a little bit nervous about holding through them at this point. That's all we have. Good luck and good trading.